So hi everyone and welcome to Get Dressed for Success from Swing to JavaFX. My name is Pau and this is my good friend and colleague Martin. And today we're going to show you how to work with JavaFX and how to build a simple application by... Um, <coughs> but, but actually before, before you say anything more, uh, I'm sorry about this, but um, we need to talk about something. In the middle of presentation? Yes. Why? I'm so sorry, but there's something we have to talk about, and it's kind of about the presentation. Uh, you see, I know that you've been reminding me and going on and on about how important it is that we learn everything about JavaFX and prepare for this presentation, you know? Know everything about it? Well, uh, it turns out there are a lot of good shows on TV, and so many good beers out there, so many good pubs. And it turns out time really flies when you're having fun. And I've, I've been having a whole lot of fun. So, uh, so I've here been we doing are. my part of the presentation. And you've been drinking beer and watching TV, right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. So that's it. Uh, We're done. Any questions? No, well Thank you. Before, <laughs> before we continue that far, um, there's actually a problem. Oh, well, there's an opportunity here for you. You see, um, you know a lot about JavaFX. And by coincidence, a client of mine has asked me to convert a Swing application into JavaFX. And it's not like the deadline is today or anything, but uh, you when know. When is the deadline? It's tomorrow. <laughs> <coughs> you suck. And all these people have come here to learn about JavaFX. So I thought, why don't you convert my application from Swing to JavaFX, show everybody how it works, I'll have a seat. Maybe and a beer? And a beer, yeah, and just wake me up when you're done and perfect. Yeah, sure. Great. Thanks. Yeah. No. Mm, no. You know what? Um, I'm pretty happy today, so I'll be, I'll be gentle with you <laughs> and I will cut you a deal. If you stay on stage with me and, you know, show me your Swing application, then I will perhaps help you convert it to JavaFX. But you have to stay on the stage and you have to be sober. No TV. Ah, uh, all right. So we try to convert your Swing application into JavaFX. Is that OK? That sounds OK. OK, yeah. I guess S it's a fair deal for me. For you, yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about the application then. Yeah, <clears throat> this Swing application is actually something that I think you will like a lot. Because yeah. you're into sports, you run, you compete in triathlons and everything. And this is an application to find races or to find competitions. So if you go to Poland, for example, and you want to compete in a race, you can just enter your criteria, like the distance and do you want to run or bike or a triathlon and so on. And you will get a list of all the races that match your criteria. So to the left, you can see a list of the matching races, and you can see the different dis uh, distances, like uh, the swimming distance in a triathlon, for example, and then the running and so on. And most of the rest of the application is taken up by this web page. But that's not really true, because when these people made this app, it turned out there is no way to show a web page in Swing. You don't have like a browser in Swing. Mm -hmm. So this is just a screenshot of the web page. And nice. you have to click it and it opens in a browser. So it's, it's the best they could do, but it's not that good, really. And at the bottom of the page, there's a list of, well, with some photos from, from previous races. And if you look carefully up top, there are three tabs. The first one is the web page or the screenshot of the web page. And the second one is a map. A map. And, well, this map shows where in the world the this race takes place. And as you, as you can see, it's not very accurate. For example, this race takes place in most of California. Um, and that's because this is not a real map. They have taken a shortcut here as well. This is also just an image. And the coordinates are correct, but, mm, well, it's not very accurate. And the final tab is just a table with some results from, from previous years or from last year. So that's the app. It's not very complicated, but they want to make it prettier, of course. And Sorry? <laughs> the table might be a screenshot. I don't know. <laughs> Good question. All right, but have, let's have a look at the architecture of this. We have the UI up, up top, of course, and the UI uses a 
component factory class that they've created um, that returns all the different lists and, and everything that's used in the application. And at the bottom we have a race data provider, which is an interface that wraps the persistent storage or the network calls or wherever we get, we get the competition information from. So we have a single interesting domain object called the race, which has a title and a distance and uh, all the photos and so on. So if we continue, you can see that in the data provider at the bottom, we have a list that just returns, um, we have a method that, that just returns a list of ra races or competitions. So my idea is to reuse this part at the bottom and well, throw away the rest and write a new user interface and that's about all I've done. So, yeah. Nice. All right, so what do you say? Sure, yeah, let's convert your Swing application into JavaFX. How hard can it be? <coughs> For me, hard. So what is JavaFX? If you're new to JavaFX or if you never heard of it, you might, well, some of you might remember the old times when JavaFX was a separate script language. That was a long time ago. Today, JavaFX is a part of Java. So it's bundled with Java 7, and you don't have to download anything. It's, it's all part of, of Java. So no script language, pure Java. And there are no, no additional files you have to install? or no. It just comes with It's with pure Java. Java nowadays. Oh, really? Yeah. And a couple of years ago, there was a lot of criticism towards JavaFX for lack of components. We didn't have a table. Oh. We need a table. We need a table. But today, we have a bunch of components, as I will show you later on. But I can show you some of them. <coughs> so we have some text. And we have combo boxes. We have sliders. We have progress bars. We have tabs. We also have lists, accordions, and some other stuff. And then we have some charts that are really impressive. I will show you a screenshot of what it can look like later on but they're really beautiful. And we have a table, and we have media, so we can play audio and video. And we also have this browser component that is based on WebKit, so it's really competent. It can show just about any web page. So we'll be able to show a web page for real this time. For real? Great. Yeah. So we have a lot of components in JavaFX, and we also have some layouts. We have a border pane. All right, I recognize this. This is, well, kind of the border layout from Swing. Yeah, kind of. So it's called border pane. And we have a H box, we have V box, and we have a very flexible grid pane that you can customize in whatever way you like it. And you can set call span and row span. Oh, like in, like in a web page, like in HTML? Yeah, pretty okay. much so. Cool. So we have JavaFX that is just Java. And we have components, and we have, lay we have layouts. So it's very complete. So are you ready for your first JavaFX example? It's a bit scary, but uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. So this is not the application that we're going to build. It's just a very simple example to show you what JavaFX is. Your first JavaFX app. Yes. And this is it. We create a class, and we extend application. And application is the base class for all JavaFX applications. And then we implement the main method. And in the main method, we invoke application.launch. And the launch method will start up the entire JavaFX runtime. And when it's up and running, it will invoke your start method. So the start method is where you will create and customize your user interface. So let's take a look at the start method. We create a grid pane, and we create a button and a label. And we set the row and column index on the button and the label, and we just add it to the grid pane. And we're done. And it will look something like this. Whoa. I know. You're really trying to sell this. Yeah, yeah I like it. Can you do that in Swing? Uh, yes, it's very easy. <laughs> OK. Um, but this is fairly easy. It's quite, quite similar to Swing. I mean, you remove 
You remove the J from J button and you get a button. You remove J from J label and you get a label. Yeah. So I think I know this. No problem. That is, it's that easy. is JavaFX. Yeah. Spot but it's on. It's, it's pretty much the same. So the code might look, look the same, but you know, underneath the code, we have a completely different model from Swing. So we use the scene graph. And this is an example of a simple scene graph. We have a root node, and when, then we have branches and leaf nodes. And the leaf nodes are just your user interface components. And this is a totally different way of, of creating a user interface com compared with Swing. So, for example, what if you want to add, a, say, a reflection to one of the leaf nodes, like this? Like a reflection effect? Yeah. OK, cool. We have that in JavaFX. So we have a lot of different effects, like reflection and blur and drop shadow that you can use. And you can do that in Swing as well, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but it's not very easy. You have to know Java 2D, and it's, well, it's not as much fun, I, I can imagine. No. And what happens in Swing if you want to move the reflection? So the reflection will ap be applied to both leaf nodes. Then you have a couple of days' work ahead of you. Sure. And in JavaFX, you just move the reflection up one step in the hierarchy. And the reflection will be applied to both leaf nodes. So it's very easy to use, and it's very easy to create really good-looking user interfaces with this. OK, yeah. I'll take a word for it, but this looks very abstract. I don't really get it. Um, can you show a simpler example, perhaps uh, the scene graph for the previous impressive example? Sure. So we have the grid pane, and it's a root node. And we have the button and the label as leaf nodes. It's super easy. Yeah, but I think you cheated a bit here. I think you left some parts out because this is a bit too easy. Because I distinctly remember seeing something about a scene and a stage. Oh, yeah. But it's not part of the scene graph, but I, I think I have to ex explain it for you to understand. So the stage is it's like a window. It's not, I wouldn't say that it's, it's a J-frame, but it's kind of a J-frame. So it's the window. And then we have the scene that is more like a you know, the content pane. Mm -hmm. So we have the, see the stage, and in the stage is the scene, and the, the scene graph is within the scene, like this. Oh. So, OK, so that's like the content of the application, and the others yeah. are more like, well, something else. Yeah. I think I get it, maybe. All right, so we know everything we need to know to start working on my project, which is kind of important and in very much of a hurry. Yeah, sure. let's do it. No. no. There is one thing we have to discuss, discuss and that is, well, I, I better ask you a question. What is this? Oh, that's a picture of you as a baby, isn't it? Very funny, mister. No, it's not. It's not me as a baby. But you look exactly like that when you eat. It's got to be you. <laughs> nope. No? Nope. Well, it's clearly some kind of spaghetti baby. I don't know. Nope. Well, yeah. Nope. OK, no. OK, it's, it's your code. It's my code? It's your no, code. No, 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 my code never looks like that. Never. It's your code, and it's, you know, look at the Swing project. It's all the code in a Swing project is exactly like that. Because you mix the UI with the logic, and that is just crap. <laughs> uh, well, I think I know what you mean, but I would never write something like that. Uh, we did have a new guy in over the summer, though, and all of a sudden we had action listeners on buttons with SQL code in them, and it was a whole mess, and it took forever to clean up. And yeah, I see what you mean, but I would never write code like that. Sure. Well, so with Swing, it's, it's really hard to separate the UI from the logic, and that is not, I mean, it's not your fault. So, you claim that your architecture looks like this, but I would say that it's more like this. So you have UI and a lot of misplaced logic, because there is no way to separate it. But in JavaFX, we have another way of doing it. So we can create a user interface using FXML. Ah. And it's just an XML language, just like Android or, or Microsoft or, or any, others, uh, any other company. You know, we tag them. We tag the UI using XML, and but in JavaFX, it's called FXML. 
but I don't like XML. It's boring and I don't want to write it. No? No, I just don't want to. You're like a little child. Yeah, well so anyway, the problem with XML is that it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of code and it's kind of boring. I yeah. know about it, but think about it. You create your user interface and then you're done. You don't have to go back to edit XML. I mean, you create the user interface and then you create the logic and the bugs is in the logic. The bugs? Sure. Ah, okay, what So, my, how often do you get a bug report that says, move this checkbox one pixel to the left? I mean, it's mm. the logic. So, you create the user interface once using XML, and then you're done. I mean, you can tweak it and do some, some updates, but you write it once, and then you're done. All right. So, I don't have to write it that often. That's, no. that's what you're saying. No. So, you know, I can show you what it's like, and you can decide later on if you want to use it. Sure. Okay. So, this is the architecture using FXML. We have the user interface on top, and it's clearly separated from the logic. That's what we're going to do. All right. Um, so let's see, even, let's see an example. This is some simple FXML. We declare that we create a grid pane, and in the grid pane we have children. And the children contains of a button and a label. And we set you know, row index, column index, and some text. And that's it. So it's very, very easy. Okay, so we create this XML file and then somehow by magic we get it into our code. Like this. Oh. So we use a JavaFX class that is called FXML loader that takes your FX FXML file and just load it and you will get in return the root node of the scene graph. In this case, the grid pane. And then you can just add the grid pane or the root node to the scene like we did before and then the scene to the stage. Okay. And it looks like this. Again. Again. Wow. Whoa. I know. You pick the best examples. I know. <laughs> Maybe I should do that next time. <coughs> so that is FXML. It's easy to use. And if, you, if you're running NetBeans, you have code completion and everything there. So it's super easy to use. Okay. Let's use FXML then. You get your way. Okay. You're going to do most of the work anyway. So um, why I not? Know. So let's create your application. And it looks like this. We have a list to the left with the different competitions, and we have the web view, and we have a list, list of images in the bottom. Correct. So I was thinking that maybe we can use a layout like this. It's a grid pane with a list on the left side. The list on the left side has a row span of two. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. So let's start with the FXML. We create the grid pane. And we, we want to make sure that the web view takes up as much space as possible because that, that's the, the main feature of the application. Yeah, now that we can actually show a real web page, it's actually useful. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, we set row constraints to make sure that the bottom list, the bottom list with images takes up 160 pixels at a maximum. And then we add column constraints to make sure that the list with the competitions takes up a maximum of 240 pixels. So we've set the constraints. Now let's add the components. So we declare children, and then we add the list view. And we set row index and column index and row span. And then we add the web view, and then we add the list with the images. Wow, so you can have a horizontal list view in JavaFX. Yeah, like in Swing. No, well, no, not in. No, that's, that's, that's not, not available happen. in Swing. I know, but in JavaFX we can do that. Very fancy. All right. That's it. That's the FXML. We're done. Okay, but I think you've been cheating again here because how how would we connect this to our code? Because we've created components here, but we want to interact with them somehow by magic. Okay, sure. So we have the FXML, the UI on top, and we need a way to connect the UI with the logic. And all we have to do is declare a controller like this, FX controller, and the name of the class, your controller class that contains the logic. So FX controller. Okay, but I can see another problem here. Um, we only have one web view, so that's probably fairly easy to find a reference to, but we have two list views, and we have to somehow know which is which. We can't put the races in the photo list. 
you are correct. So we add IDs to the components. Mm -hmm. So race list, browser, and photo list. That's the name of the component, the IDs. Now we're done. Now we're done. Or do you have more problems? Uh, well, I have problems, but <laughs> not with this. <laughs> okay, so let's continue to the controller. This is the race controller. So we implement race controller, we implement initializable, and we implement the single method initialize. And in the initialize method is where we set up the components and you know push data to the list. All right, so let's start by adding some races to, to the race list. Sure. In order to do that, we need a reference to the components, to the list. Oh and yeah, with the IDs. Yeah, and we get that by just declaring a list view with a variable name that is identical to the ID of the component. So we have race list, photo list, and browser. But I don't, I don't like this. Do you like this? Having public variables in classes like that? Not very nice. No, no, no. So you can just add an annotation at FXML and make them private. Wow, you're well prepared. I wow, know. yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's much nicer. Because you don't want anybody to be able to fiddle with your lists. No. That's not a good thing. That is correct. So we have a reference to the different components in the FXML. And the next step is to add some data. Yes. So I'm using your race builder to get the list with the different competitions, the domain object race. Correct. And then there's a little, well, we can't add the race list to the list. Because the race list wants an observable array. And an, okay. an observable array is, well, it's an array that's observable. Wow. I know. So the list, the UI, the list, will observe the list that you passed to the component. And if you change the data model, the list, the UI will be updated automatically. Try not to block the view. Now I'm blocking your view instead. Sorry. So we pass in, uh, we use FX collection dot observable array list to create this observable array list from a uh, regular list. And if we just, if, if we change the data model, the list will be updated automatically. Wow, that's really easy. I know. That's actually a lot easier than in Swing. I know. I like this. You have to call like fire update, I don't know, fireworks. Yeah, something strange. Know. Fireworks, yeah. Yeah, fireworks yeah. to make it happen. And the next step is to add some kind of listener. So when you click on, on, on a specific cell, we want to update the web browser, the URL in the web browser, and yeah. the images. Load a different page and yeah. put new photos in the photo list. And we do that by adding a change listener to your list by mm -hmm. doing this. So um, let's take a look at the race change listener. And this is the one that we've implemented. So we implement change listener, and we implement a single method changed. And every time the user selects a new cell in the list, this one will get invoked. And once again, we take the images from the race domain model, and we add them to an observable list. And we add that list to the photo list. So photo it. list set all, yeah. So that's all we have to do to make this whole user interface work, basically. Yeah. And it's then like we have to change the URL in the browser. And we do that by invoking browser get engine load. That's how you, you load a URL. OK, but that's everything we have to do. That's everything we have to do. Cool. That, that's and like four lines of code. Yeah. I like that. And it looks like this. OK. It's a very good start. Um, but I can see that you have a list now, the race list. It, it simply it does, it, it only, only contains the name of the races. So you have Escape from Alcatraz, Iron Man, Hawaii, and so on. But if you, if you remember my screenshot, we had a flag of the country of the race. We had the different distances. Yeah, we pretty much had this. So we want the flag to the left, the title in a nice big font, and the different distances within the race. So yeah, how are we going to do this? The default way in JavaFX in a list is just to show the string of the object. So we have to add some kind of self factory to create different cells. And we have the list and we have a self factory. And when the list is initialized, it will ask the self factory for, for a cell. And it will get a cell in return. But this is an empty cell. 
There's no content, there's no text, there's no distances, no flag. And that will happen like 10 times or 12 times. If we have 10 items, we need two buffer items. So we have 10 empty items in the list. And as soon as the list wants to show, I mean really show to the user one of the elements, it will call update. And that's when we set the name of the race, the flag, the images and everything like that. Hmm. So and even if we have a million items, only 12 will be created or five or yeah. a small number. Even if we had a hundred million items. Even if we had a thousand million items. No. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so the reason for doing this is creating a cell is a lot of work and it takes a lot of resources. So you want to do that before the user starts to scroll. And when the user starts to scroll, you just want to update the content in the cell and not create a new one. All right. So, so up it's updating is fast. Yeah. Updating, updating is fast. I see. And creating takes a lot of time. So we should do the heavy lifting in the beginning. All right. So this is how we do it. We connect the list to the self factory by invoking set self factory. And all we have to do is implement, you know, dot, dot, dot. And this is how we do that. So set self factory, we call, we, we use a callback interface. And that's very generic in JavaFX. It's kind of a replacement for lambdas. So we use callback everywhere in JavaFX. And we have two types. And the first one is the return type of the call method. And the second type is the parameter to the call method. So we get the list. And what we have to do every time call gets invoked is create a single cell. Hmm, I see. OK. You see. So let's create a cell. All right. We create a grid pane. Oh, been here before. <laughs> yeah. We create grid pane. We create an image view. And we create the label and... Yeah, yeah, I get it. We create all the stuff we need, basically. Yeah, so I'm just showing you the swim distance. It's a, it's, it's a short version. And we create some images and we add all this stuff to the grid pane. So now we have a grid pane that is just floating around, unattached to anything. Nice. And that's the whole point. So we don't want to you know, set the grid pane to the cell until update is invoked. So what's left is to create the gray box, create a list, uh, list cell. And this is how we do that. We create a list cell, and we implement this single method, update item. OK, so the cell has an update item method. OK, yep, yeah, I get it. So every time a cell is about to be displayed, update is invoked. And we have to check if it's an empty item. So the second parameter, parameter empty, is true in the case that the cell is empty. So if you have a long list and you only have like five items, some of the cells will be empty. I see. So we check if it's empty. If it's not, then we set you know, the image, the text, the flags, everything. And then we call set graphics. And set graphics is how we attach the grid pane to the cell. OK. So we're done. We're done. And this is what it looks like. Sweet. So we customize the cells to the left. Are you yeah. satisfied? No, no, I'm not. Um, Do it yourself. Well, <coughs> please, would you help me to change something? Um, uh, all the right information is there, so that's very good. And it didn't take a whole lot of code. I'm actually impressed. It's it's really nice, but. Um, I want the name of the race in a bigger font and some space uh, spacing between the distances and so on. It's all a mess. It's all pushed together. It is? Yeah, it's, it has okay, to look nice, is. you know? So we can add padding programmatically. Yeah. But there's another way of doing it. We can use CSS because JavaFX supports CSS. Like on a web page? Yeah, sure. Ooh. It's kind of the same. They have the prefix dash FX. But it's kind of the same. So I will show you how to do that. So I will, I will make the cells look a little bit more beautiful by using CSS. So the first thing we have to do is inject the CSS into the scene. And we do that by invoking get style sheets and add. So we add our style sheet. OK, that's easy Pretty enough. Pretty simple. Yep. And the next step is to, we need to identify the different components so we can connect them with a style sheet. 
And in this case, we want to customize the cell. So on the grid pane, we set a style class, and it, when we call it grid, so that's the ID. And then on the name, because uh, you want to make the name a little bit bigger and, and bold. Oh yeah, the name of the race. So we just set ID race name. So we've injected the CSS that we haven't created yet, and we've set the IDs in the code. And the next step is to just to create the, the style. Oh, wow. And this is pretty much like you know the CSS that we're used to on the web with nice. the dash FX. So you set the font and the size, and it's bold, and some gaps for yeah. the grid? Yeah. All right, and we could easily change this without well, looking in actual code. A yeah. designer could fix this. Yeah. Cool. You could fix it. Uh, I don't know about that. And this is what it looks like. So you have a bigger bowl of font and you have some spacing. You know, it's not much, but you get the idea. Yeah, that's nice. This is a very simple example, but uh, I think a lot of people get uh, the power of JavaFX. Uh, chances are you have a slightly more complex application than this, and it won't take like an hour to convert it. Uh, and I bet many of you want to use the web pane as, or web view as, you know, kind of the first step into JavaFX. Like you said, it's based on WebKit, which is really powerful. And having that in a Swing application would be great. Sure. So is there like a web pane? No? Nope. So basically you want to use some part of JavaFX in your Swing application. Yeah, or like the charts, perhaps, that yeah. you said were good. So you don't want to rewrite your entire Swing application, because that would take a lot of time. So you can, you can do, it, do it step by step by just using a little bit, bit of uh, JavaFX. And you can do that. So that's JavaFX in Swing. Yep. And <laughs> in your example, you want to reuse the web pane. Correct. And I can show you how to do that. So let's jump to Swing. So this is the Swing JavaFX integration. And so far, it's only Swing. In the main method, we use Swing Utilities and Invoke Later, like in Swing. Like we always should do. Yeah. And yes. then you just call init and show GUI. So OK. So far, so good. Yep. And then let's take a look at init and show GUI. We create a JFrame. That's the window. And then we create the magic. That's Ooh. the, the J JFX panel. And the oh. JFX panel is a swing component that can show JavaFX. So we can stick any JavaFX code into this panel? Sure. You wow. can stick the graphs or, or the web pane or just a label if you like. Nice. But why would you do that? <laughs> so we create the JFX panel and we add the JFX panel to the frame. And then we just show the frame. And when we're done, we invoke a method. And that method should be running on the JavaFX application thread. And it's like Swing Utilities, but you call platform and run later. So let's take a look at the init FX. And note that we're passing the FX panel to the init FX. Mm -hmm. And in the init FX, well, now we're using JavaFX. So we create the web view, and we create a scene, and we add the web view to the scene. And then we add the scene to the FX panel. So now we, we have the JFrame with the FX panel with the web view. So we have Swing and we have JavaFX running in Swing. OK, so instead of, uh, what did you call it, the stage? Stage. We have a J J JFX panel. That's cool. It's cool. And so we you can, can reuse any part of JavaFX within that in panel. Swing. All right, so it's like a JavaFX container. Yeah, it is. Wow. So, I mean, I know that everything is running in the same application, but you're talking about different threads and so on. What if we want to tell the web view to load a page from a Swing, a swing application? OK, so we have some threading issues. Um, and I've already shown you how to solve it, but you know, let's repeat. If you're in a Swing context and you want to update something that is JavaFX, you have to invoke platform run later. Right, so that's the way to tell JavaFX to do something yeah, to go from Swing to JavaFX. All right. And you can also go the other way around, from JavaFX into Swing, and you just invoke Swing Utilities like you always should. Like we always do. Yes. <coughs> okay. No, you don't. That's it. I think we're done. Yeah. No. Or are we? I don't know. Uh, 
Something missing? Something missing? I don't know. Um, I think there's one big reason of using JavaFX, and that's it looks cool. You can do cool stuff with it. I think we need bling bling. Right? <laughs> right? Am I right? We need more of this. <coughs> Maybe not this. You can sti skip by this. Um, but uh, what do you say? Bling do you have bling. any ideas? Sure. So uh, bling bling, bling bling, bling bling. I, I can do bling bling. <laughs> so we... Please move on. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to add a bling bling. And, you know, we haven't implemented the three tabs. We have Ooh. the web view, the map, and the table. So let's blingify it. <laughs> and I was right. thinking, you know, this is, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, might, I might be the first one to do this, but, you know, this is the application. What if we could, you know, press some key and make the web view smaller? Okay. And to show the other components. Oh, and you're using a Mac? Yes, I think I know where you got your inspiration from. Sure, <coughs> yeah. whatever. So let's add some animation to make this beautiful. Okay. And we have, in JavaFX, we have support for some very advanced animations, like transition. Oh. And we have scale, and we have rotate, and we can do everything at once. Oh. I know. Nice. So we have fade, we have path transi trans transitions, so you can do a lot of stuff in JavaFX and make some really cool, cool animations. And we're going to use the scale transition and the translate transition, and we're going to use the parallel transition to do it together. Okay with you? Oh yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. So we create a translate transition, and we say that we want to operate on the browser and it should take 500 milliseconds. So translate is to move something? Yeah. Okay. Because it takes up all the space, so we need to move it just a little bit. Okay. And we set that, you know, the, the end position sh should be 400 by 500. And then we do the scale and we say we're going to, you know, make it a little bit smaller. Hmm. And we'll do everything at once. Yes, we do everything at once. Okay. Pretty so nice, right? Yeah. Do you have a screenshot? No. I have a demo. Oh. There it is. Okay, and that's the web browser. And you can see that it's working. It's not an image. It's a real web browser. It's not a video. <laughs> or is it? I can click <laughs> I can click anywhere. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna. Yeah, the network is working, maybe. Sure, yeah. it is. So we have a real web browser, and when I press some random key. Ooh. And the web browser is still working. And you can have a look at the chart. And this is one of the JavaFX chart, and it's we haven't styled it in any way. You can style it using CSF, CSS if you like. But this is what it looks like out of the box. Cool. It is. And we also had a table and everything from the tabs. And we have no network. Ah, doesn't really matter. No. Um, okay, but the browser is working somehow. Doesn't matter. No okay. network. Okay. So that's your application. Yeah. And I think so. I like it. And it didn't take a whole lot of time to write it. Well, or to replay writing it. <laughs> okay. Um, My job is done. Your job I've is done. I've converted your Swing application into JavaFX. And we've, I mean, we've looked at some of the concepts like, you know, the web view and how to create it using a scene graph. And yeah, I really like that you can split up everything to where it's best suited, you know. You can have your layouts or well, the content of the program or the user interface as an XML file. Well, you might not like XML, but it's, it's a nice way to separate the GUI from the logic. And you can have the style as a CSS file. That means you can use a good web designer for your custom UIs and make it look real pretty. And of course, you have logic in Java, which is where it belongs. And that's very nice, too. Uh, right. And we've only shown you the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more that you can use. And if you're not into writing user interfaces, we have a, a scene builder 
where you can drag and drop and make some really ugly code underneath. <laughs> so you don't have to write XML? No, you don't That's have good. to. You can use the scene, scene builder. That's it. That's it. All right. Um, we have a few minutes for questions. Oh, right. Good. Um, the micro microphone person ran off, but uh, if you shout loud, I'd repeat the question. Great. You used the uh, part of the code for describing how the list cell should look like. Yes. Yeah. Repeat Kay. the question. The question is, can you use FXML to design a list item, right? Yeah, pieces of yeah. pieces of the UI. And you the can. answer is yes. Yes. Great. Good so answer. Yeah. So the FXML is really convenient when it comes to creating really big user interfaces. But you can do it with, with you know, just a label and a button as well, as <laughs> I've shown you. <laughs> so yeah. yes. Very impressive. All right. We had more questions. Yes. Is there data validation support for fields or for components? Yeah. Uh, the guys who work with the components in JavaFX actually got this question at Java 1. And they're working on it, but they think it's a very important thing to get right. Uh, you could use bean validation or whatever you want that's already there for Java. But they, when they build it into JavaFX, they want to make it right. And there is a mailing list where you can add input to how would you like it to work and so on. So because validation is very important and, and it's kind of a tricky part to get right in a UI because you want fields that are not right to be marked in a certain way and so on. So they're working on it and it might, it might be around for the next release, which is together with Java 8, I guess. It is. Um, so yeah, it's a good question. Yep. Uh, I have actually two questions. The okay. first is um, you showed how to embed the Java FX application into Swing application. Uh, the question is, can you do another way around? So you have newly built Java FX application. Can you use some obsolete Swing components inside? That's the first question. Uh, yeah. The second question is, can you use all the features with uh, older version of Java, like six or six or five, for example? Okay. So the first question is. Uh, we showed how to use JavaFX in Swing, which is a very natural thing to do. But can you use Swing in JavaFX? Ooh. <laughs> no, I I'll don't pass know. it on to you, and you can pass it on to the next guy. <laughs> uh, you know, to be honest, I'm not sure, but I don't think so. It's supposed to work the other way around, because Swing is kind of, it's kind of deprecated. So th they want to push JavaFX, but I'm not sure. And the sec No. Okay, no. The, qu the answer is no. Um, and your second question was, ooh, yeah, can you use it with older versions of Java? I don't know about, I, I, I don't know if there's uh, kind of limitations on, on the newer releases, but uh, JavaFX 2 came out last year, I think. And we used that on Java 6 for Java 1 and for all the conferences, yeah. Okay, so let's see if I got this right. Uh, when we loaded a CSS file, did we load it from the web or did we load it from a, the jar file, basically? And in our case, it was from the jar file, right? Yes. But you can do, I think you can load it from an external resource as well. Yes. I'm not sure, but it's, um, we almost always use it from within the jar file, or I have never used it any other way for performance or, yeah, you don't want all these files uh, to be downloaded. Um, and your other question was about browser performance? Yes, uh, when you have multiple resources, uh, does the frame, f does the JavaFX uh, take care of bundling the resources into one? Oh, multiple resources. Well, you basically put them in your jar file, just like any Java project. 
Uh, I mean, these web pages are loaded from the internet, so they're not part of the application. Right. Is that what you mean? Yeah. But you can load it from the yeah, from the draw file as well. So yeah. you can choose. You can go and fetch an external resource, or go to your local bundle. So you can um, you can pre-bundle everything and ship it with JavaFX. Uh, maybe one more question. Mm. Uh, is there any possibility to uh, link external JavaScript files, or is it? Uh, just to integrate it with your application, or this is something not recommended? Uh, we mm. actually have a session about this tomorrow. <coughs> uh, Be there. About the web view in JavaFX, which is actually very powerful. And uh, we have, I think we have... We have some commercial. <laughs> so this is what we will we'll be showing tomorrow. And this is, uh, this is... This is a web view. And we communicate between the web view and JavaFX. So Both ways. So we have a web page with Google Maps. Yeah. And we communicate with that from JavaFX. Yeah. And we can communicate both ways. So if you want to know how to do this, like I need a beer, you need a beer. I need a beer. You do it. Okay. Uh, so let's see if the network works. But um, yeah, sure. I need a beer. We're, we're here and we need a beer. Yeah. Whoops. So we immediately get a list of all the pubs in the area. And this is downloaded on the fly from, from Google Maps which is very fancy and we can also pick one of these i'm not going to show too much of this demo but here we get a recommended route to this pub from where we are now and we get the taxi price for this trip so we're, we're communicating with the google maps uh, and javafx both ways and you can download scripts and have them executed in the browser on the fly and we'll show you how tomorrow uh, sure know. you're thirsty i am we have two more minutes. OK, sure. One second. Uh, you've mentioned that uh, we can uh, separate logic and um, um, view yep. part. And the question is, do we have some fancy tools to create such a, 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 a advanced view? And uh, if there are such, tool, such tools, uh, I would like to ask if they are mature enough. OK? Sorry if there are. If I'll say good enough. Oh, good enough. Uh, oh, mature. Okay, I see. Okay. Uh, all right, tools for creating the XML, basically, right? Uh, there is a tool called Scene Builder, I think. <coughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So uh, I haven't used it that much actually. So no I don't know if it's. I prefer like to code, but I've seen it and I've used it, but I prefer to code. So, but yeah. they've been working on it for a very long time, so it should be pretty good. Okay, in the back. I would like uh, I would like to ask you to compare uh, this uh, FX Java technology with XJS plus direct binding. So if I have to develop application in, uh, with this technology, what will be profits and loses? Uh, compare it to. Sorry, I didn't uh, hear. If you put a it typical web application, uh, a based web application, on the okay. Sencha XJS plus okay, okay, yeah. uh, Tomcat server and binding. I see, yeah. Binding, which is very similar to, to that architecture, but yeah, I, uh, I will. G I know that there are some advantages and loses. So. Yeah, it depends a bit on what you want to do. Um, you get much much better UI performance with a well native program like this. And JavaFX is actually really fast, and you can do pretty uh, impressive stuff, much more impressive than, than his examples, <laughs> and with all the effects and so on. Uh, so we can talk a bit more about it afterwards, but it depends on what you want to use it for, I think. Last okay. question. OK, last question. We'll be around later, so don't worry about it. Is JavaFX thread safe, or you have to implement the same invoke later methods as in Swim? OK, threading in JavaFX. Well, we showed you the uh, platform dot uh, run later, right? And, and it's the same issue as with Swing. So if you're running on a, s on a separate thread, you will have to do callbacks. So it's, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to create a UI toolkit that is thread safe. I mean, no one has ever done it. So <laughs> JavaFX is not thread safe, no. Yeah, Java, JavaFX uses its own thread. And if you want to do something with the JavaFX objects, you have to tell JavaFX to use, do it on that thread, basically. So it's, it's the same as Swing. It's the platform invoke later. Yeah. All right. Thanks. I think we're out of time. But please come up, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank, Thank you. you.